Hello everyone, this is Matthew Craig. If you've paid attention to the news recently, you may have heard about something called H7N9, which is the new flu virus that's recently popped up in China. At the moment, it's still isolated in China, so it's not that big of a worry for the US quite yet, but it's already killed 26 people and has infected another 100. Some are concerned that it could very easily spread outside of China, which would give cause for everyone to be concerned. And the reason why it's this particularly nasty virus is because it has unique genes from several other strains, and if it's not handled properly, it could lead to a massive pandemic. It's even earned the nickname the Novel Influenza Virus. However, even considering all that, it might not actually be quite as bad as some believe. I say this because a scientific study re that was released back in January of this year showed that Chinese individuals are particularly susceptible to getting severe influenza symptoms, and that in comparison, most Western countries would have greatly reduced flu severity. The study focused on a very specific variant of a gene that alters the function of a protein. The name of this protein, and stay with me here, is the interferon-induced transmembrane protein 3. For the sake of simplicity, we are going to now ab abbreviate that long name as just IFITM3. Basically, it's a protein that deals with objects that enter or leave a cell through a specific pathway. And if you have an allele that changes this, it means that if you get the flu, you're going to have a very bad one. This study actually was performed in the midst of the 2009 swine flu pandemic. They went around to Chinese hospitals, observed patients, and for those who consented, had their genes sequenced to find out if they had the specific allele of IFITM3 that made them more susceptible. This gene usually is responsible for restricting the replication of influenza viruses. However, those who were CC homozygous were much more likely to su suffer severe respiratory illnesses. And it was found that out of the infected patients that they observed, 40% were homozygous for the CC genotypes, which means that both copies of the gene that they had in their DNA were the allele that made them more susceptible to getting severe symptoms. And if you narrowed it down to only those who already had severe illnesses, then it jumped up to nearly 70% out of this sample. And once again, if you take it to an even lower level out of only those people from that sample who died, 13 people died, and out of those 13, 10 of them were homozygous for CC. They had hypothesized that it is, and I quote, a virus restriction factor mediating cellular resistance to influenza viruses and other viruses that enter the cell via the acidic endosome. During viral infections, your body's immune system does its best to fight it off. And one way to determine the severity of the infection is from the response that your immune system gives. One action that your body takes is releasing a chemical called monocyte chemotactic protein 1, which will henceforth be abbreviated MCP-1 or MCP-1. And you can measure the level of this in the bloodstream and other areas of the body. The researchers found significantly higher serum levels of MCP-1, as well as a higher level of antibodies in patients with the homozygous CC genotype. All this data suggests that the allele is indeed directly and very closely related to the severity of the illness. For the Chinese population, a quarter of their population is homozygous CC, 25%. This could very easily explain why we hear that a lot of these new influenza viruses, new flus, come out of China and they spread out from there. But if you look at other countries, the CC genotype is all but non-existent in Europeans and other Western countries. So if the new H7N9 virus does spread out from China, it'll still be a cause for worry and people should be careful, but I can guarantee you that it won't end the world, since 
a lot of other countries will not have nearly as severe symptoms as the Chinese are suffering right now in the tragic fires that's happened. But before we close this out, for those interested, here's a quick quiz. First question, what gene that codes for a protein was being studied? Second question, what genotype would put you at the least risk for getting severe symptoms? Third and final question, from that genotype, which of the following most accurately describes the gene? So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. As always, this is Matthew Craig, and thanks for watching.